Welcome back to another video, guys. Now that I have the whole undercarriage pressure washed on this car, I have lowered the jack stands back down to a more reasonable height. Now we can keep moving on with more of the disassembly. Another viewer had pointed out um, is that a lot of that oil and grease is probably like some sort of fluid film to prevent rust. But yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that that is what's all over this uh, undercarriage. That steering rack has got to go. Um, and I don't know what it is, man, about these Subarus, but it seems like no matter what, these steering racks leak. So if you guys have a suggestion for how to keep these steering racks and these Subarus from leaking, I am all ears. Uh, it seems like no matter what I do, but yeah, if you guys have suggestions for, for keeping these steering racks from uh, getting all leaky, uh, please let me know. Ah. So let's just take a look at this exhaust real quick, guys. I just pulled the genome off. Um, thing is an absolute cannon. I don't know what happened here. They just like added another piece through this section here. And I'm just confused. I mean, and these welds are pretty horrendous looking. I, I mean, I can't really, I can't really talk because I don't even know how to weld, but um, this piece looks like it was the original piece uh, with this hanger and it fits perfect on there. So um, it just looks like, I don't know, maybe there was like a piece in here that was all rusted out and they still wanted to run this. And so they just got someone to, to fix it or DIY'd it in the garage. I, I don't know. I don't know how well that's sealing right there. I didn't touch these bolts. So it doesn't even look like there's a gasket in there to be totally honest with you guys. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not, in the best condition. Um, kind of unfortunate. I I do think this exit can still be used. Um, just looks like to me that this should be redone. I wouldn't want to run it like that personally. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Just wanted to uh, show you guys the good old genome that's been tampered with in a major way. off here that protects the drive shaft back here to go release the e-brake so we can spin this. Break again. Okay. All right, so that's out. Uh, let's see what next down here. Uh, basically, I need to start attacking all of the suspension components. I don't know how you guys like to do it, but I personally like to put my hardware back on whatever piece it came off to store it like this, because then I know that I won't lose it. Uh, when it doesn't make sense to do this, cause I gotta like refinish the part and the hardware can't be on there. I do put it in like plastic baggies and label it all. But if I don't need to take that extra step to like go grab a baggie and label it and put all the stuff in there, I'm missing a washer, but we can find one later. Um, yeah, if I don't have to go through that extra step, then this isn't even the right nut. Uh, then I would prefer to just do it this way. Hopefully, these um, bolts for the Brembo calipers aren't seized because these bolts do like to seize. Oh, thank God. I was really worried these would be seized. I'm gonna have to re-thread the caliper. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. Got 
one Brembo out. Now we have to release the e-brake. Ah. All right, so I had to set the camera down for a minute because all of these, well, not all of them, but a lot of these 19 millimeter uh, nuts that held the spacers on, he had these gnarly spacers. These are a five by 114.3 to a five by 100. And they are 73.1 millimeters. That is so wide. Anyway, I could not get these out for the life of me. Um, I don't even know that these are the right type of uh, nut to use. Oh wait, yeah they are. He put them in backwards like this so that they sat down in the little recession there. But I couldn't get the bit to like grab onto enough of it. So I had to use my extraction bit and just had to pound that thing in there as far as I could to uh, crack them all loose. So it took me a minute to figure out like what the solution was gonna be. So I set the camera down, but and now we are rolling and I have the caliper off as well as the rotor. And now we're gonna work on this big ass bolt that goes through these suspension components here. So I just found something so wild. See that bolt sticking through right there? That's supposed to have a big ass nut on the end. That goes all the way through this lateral arm, the knuckle, and this lateral arm. And this is where you insert it. There has been no nut on this bolt this whole time. What in the world, man? That is so sus. I wasn't gonna roast the previous owner at all because I don't know. I just kind of think it's bad form generally. Cause you don't know what other people's situations are like. However, in this instance, come on, man. Are you kidding me? This is the bolt right here that I'm talking about. I have spare sitting here. There's no nut. Like what? I just, I don't get it. I don't understand why you would run a car like that ever. That makes absolutely no sense. It's stuck too, so lovely. Let's see. I just need to thread it out. Hmm. It's definitely not wanting to move, so that's annoying. I don't want to keep pounding on the back of the bolt because I don't want to uh, like mushroom the end of it and then it won't fit through. Coaxing it out of there and hopefully not break something and not fry our bushings inside the control arms. All right guys, so it is the next day. I have spent so much time on this damn long bolt that goes through the lateral arms and the uh, knuckle. <clears throat> Still have not been able to really move it. What I decided to do is just disassemble everything else, like the trailing arm and the lateral arms from the subframe and then this shock coil over. And we should be able to just pull this whole thing out. Yeah. Yeah, man, I don't know what the hell's going on with this bolt, but she don't want to move. Get this axle out. Yeah. All right, well.
No way is it working. There's no way. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it when I see it. Now, we should be able to throw a bolt in here on each side. And kind of crack that thing loose. Sweet. I think I'm gonna do what I did on the other side and we are going to leave this long bolt in and we're gonna pull the lateral arms off and then we'll worry about getting that long bolt out once it's off the car. All right, so rear subframe is out along with the rear diff and the diff carrier. The only things left on the back are the gas tank and then I do have the uh, charcoal canister and all that crap back there. Um, I think that's it. So we're pretty close to having it all stripped down. Now I just wanna move to the front, get uh, all the suspension components off. And then once we do that, we can drop the transmissions. Pretty much done on this side. Not sure if you guys noticed, but got a new impact yesterday. One of the best purchases I've made in a while. Just ripped these freaking axle nuts right off. I didn't even have to pound out the tab that was bent in. So that's freaking sweet. It's been making the teardown way better. This paint job's pretty gross. how nasty that thing is. Have two torn boots all the way in half, so that's lovely. And uh, thing was leaking like a sieve. Now we are going to move on to pulling the front subframe. Perfect. 
Wow, that looks so funny with no front subframe. It's like the gearbox is like floating there. More sus stuff right here. What the hell is this? I would really like to know. Oh my God, what the f That is some whack shit right there. I do not like that. So much stuff on this car. It's just suspect as hell. I'm just cutting those. I don't what else to do with it. We will have to repin that. Uh, one little ground cable. Guys, the gearbox is out. Uh, <laughs> kind of fell out a little bit, but I think it's fine. Um, honestly, came out pretty damn easily, uh, especially having removed that front subframe. I think that made it a lot easier. Um, yeah, we look pretty good under here now. Um, she's all gutted. The only thing left underneath the car that we still have to pull out is the gas tank and the charcoal canister. I'm going to wait to do those because I still have a little bit of gas in here that I would like to siphon out of the tank before I do that. Um, so I'll take care of that this week. Um, but yeah, I'm super glad that everything else is out from under the car. I'm going to strip out the entire engine bay and just take every like clip and line and hose out. And the reason being is I do want to respray this engine bay. And so, yeah, we have like still a bunch of uh, disassembly to take care of, but this stuff goes a lot easier and it's less messy and less dirty. So I'm psyched to start in on this. Um, in order to do this correctly though, I am gonna have to tear out the interior um, because I believe I'll be able to access the backside of a lot of these clips from inside on the other side of the firewall. Um, and I just want to preserve some of the clips, especially the clips for the ABS hard lines, because Subaru actually has discontinued those. I looked to buy those a while ago and couldn't find them anywhere because they've been discontinued. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to preserve as much as I can and, uh, get this thing all cleared out so we can prep out the car for paint. But yeah, that's all I have time for in this one. I really appreciate you guys watching. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this video or if you just simply got something out of it and you learned something. Um, and think about subscribing if you wanna see more. Uh, got a lot of cool stuff coming up in the works for this car, so it should be a pretty fun time. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.